hey, I'm doing a quick warm up, but after I finish, we're gonna head to the course and I'm gonna talk to you about the five biggest mistakes people make when they try the single plane swing. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. All right, so what have we covered? One, you gotta get the address position perfect. Number two, you gotta stop guessing at the mechanics. You gotta get it right. Number three is you can't mix mechanics. You can't be mixing, oh, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna try part of the single plane swing, which leads to the fourth thing, which is one of the great things about the single plane swing is we have an absolute model. An address position, position one, two, three, four, five, and six. We want you to hit these positions, why? Again, it's the same thing, they match up. If you get the address right, the backswing gets better, it gets on plane. You get on plane, it makes the downswing easier to get to impact. Get to impact, makes it finish, the face squares up and you hit dead straight golf shots to efficiently hit it long and straight. So all that matches up. That's why we have a model. We're not guessing at the mechanics. We know exactly where you should set up. We know exactly where your body position should be. We know exactly where your hand position should be. We know exactly where you should be in your backswing. So all those things match up, and that's why we have a model. So the fourth thing is making sure, insurance, that you're matching the model. And that's what's what the beautiful thing about having a model. All right, let's hit this shot again. And, and by the way, you know, like earlier today when I was warming up, I warmed up a little bit before I got on camera today, and I, I have not played golf in, I have not been on the course in two months. I, I've hit a few golf balls, not a lot. In the last 30 days, I have not hit any golf balls. What's the very first thing I did when I ran to the range? Check my address, go through the positions of my motion, and just kind of get back into position one, two, three, four, five, and six. So again, it's always focused, and it, what's the great thing about the model, it's always focused on the same thing. It's consistency. Here's the question for you. If you don't have a consistent swing model, how are you ever gonna be consistent swinging the golf club? Then, if you have a problem, you can solve it very quickly because you go right back to the model. That's the beautiful thing about it. Okay. Drive pretty good. Look, I was aiming, I was aiming at that from that tee. A wind, everything kind of kicks it down here. Now I'm in the center right of the fairway, so that's why you gotta play smart. One forty seven fifty three with the slope. So it's playing a little uphill, wind left to right. Again, this is an eight iron for me. Um, elevation's high. I'm gonna kind of feel this wind a little bit. <coughs> the wind is, it's kind of hurting me. It's kind of hitting me a little bit. Gosh, I just don't feel that strong today. So let me take two clubs here. I got an eight and a seven. Let's see how I feel. Again, I feel the same way. I feel kind of like, oh, I just don't like that eight iron's gonna, I mean, it's probably the perfect club, but I do, it's, that wind's hit me. So notice how what I'm doing here, I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand the spin of the golf ball. My biggest concern on, on this shot is spinning it too much, because then it gets up there and the wind just kills it. I'd rather flight the ball down. Now, here's what I don't do. Do not take that eight iron out, put it in the back of the stance and try to flight it down. Because it, the ball crawls up the face, it spins, you just hit a lower spinny shot, right? Which makes zero sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this seven again. I know it's only 150 yards, but I'm gonna take a little seven iron out. I'm gonna put my hands down, reduce the speed, reduce the spin, and try to flight one in there. It still feels like it's gonna be hard to get there. It, just, it still feels long to me. It's crazy. It's crazy. Just, just everything feels kind of short today. Here we go. Hit a little right, but we'll see. You know, I wouldn't call that spectacular, but hey, here's the thing. 
the wind kind of pushed it right like I expected. It's, it's about controlling spin. I felt like I got a little in front of that and it kind of drifted it to the right. All right, let's go make a long putt. All right, so check, check out where this ball ended up. It's obviously not anywhere near the flag. Went about 145 yards. Um, again, one of the things that you have to get good at when you play, you have to get good at assessing conditions and how you feel. People are so caught up in distance. You're so caught up in how far do you hit it. I'm caught up in, in hitting good shots, like uh, controlling the ball. Golf is a game of spin. So when, I, when I'm sitting back there, I'm like, okay, how's this gonna spin? How's the ball gonna fly? I've hit enough shots to know the green's elevated. The wind is hurting. See, the wind's coming, coming at about this angle right here. So the ball's getting up there and it's gonna get killed. And so I can try to hit a hard eight iron in there and swing hard, but you know what happens? You spin the ball, it gets way up there, and then you hit it short, now you got a hard up and down. Or you can just hit it to the center of the green or, or get it on the green, right, and give yourself a chance. Again, I, I care about control, control the ball. All right, little divots here. Long putt, I get, this is probably, let me paste this off. One thing you can always do is just kind of give yourself That's fast 60 feet. It's a pretty good putt. It's a little bit uphill. So, all right. I feel like I'm a mile from the hole here. And look, I'm just trying to two putt this thing. Be nice to get this down to two. I think it's going left there. Okay. Try to hit a decent speed here. Needs to go left some. Eh. Yeah, about three feet short. It's not too bad. Hey, one thing I love about this Biomech putter is that they now have a black shaft in it. Something about reflectionless shaft, but this black shaft really helps. Okay. Got a right edge putt here. Greens are slick. Arm lock, rock the shoulders. In the center. All right, let's head to number 12. Okay, here's the thing about this hole, number 12. I never know what to do on this hole because it's about 300 yards down to the creek. The fairway runs super fast, this downwind. And so you have this condition where I hit my drive really hard, good, it'll go in the creek. So, but I want to get it close to the creek so I have a short iron in because the green's really hard. Or I can hit three wood, but sometimes the three wood lays you back too far. So, what I'll do, I'll hit two shots and this will compare them. I got a Callaway three and a Callaway four. I'll hit the Callaway three with the driver and just kind of hit the bunt driver down there. Then we'll hit the three wood and see how it compares. Um, Here's how I kind of do this on this hole. I just kind of hit it. I just choke down and hit an easy drive. Just swing easy at it, choking down on it. And it's you just got to get the ball in the air, really, <laughs> because it'll, it'll get down there. So that's perfect. It's perfect but scary because the greens so fast, or the fairways are so fast that I might still get in the creek. So, um, all right, here's a three wood. It's the Callaway four, so we can compare. Now, a lot of you guys ask, how high do you tee the ball? I put tee it down pretty low with a three wood. You know, these things have such shallow faces, so tee it down kind of low. All right, same line with a three wood. We'll see how this one turns out. Same exact line. Okay. This will be fun because this will be a great example of, I mean, a three wood comes off high, floaty, and then the driver comes off like a bullet. We'll see. Perfect example of why this hole is 
confusing. Now, part of the reason is, is because my three wood goes 245 yards and my driver goes 285 yards. So there's this big gap between three wood and driver. And so when I get on a hole like this, I look, I'm right in the middle of the fairway, I hit this three wood really good. But let me tell you how far I have with this shot here. Okay, 180. So got 180 yards. That sucks. Like if you look at that hole location, it's on the front, 180 yards downwind, downhill, it's impossible to stop it. Now take a look at the driver. Actually, I'm gonna grab probably what I need out of here. We'll hit this shot down here. Look at the driver down there. It's it's close to the creek. So, so this is why I'm always in that no man's land. I choked up on the driver. This thing probably went 285 and maybe 290. The creek is right there. The creek is right, let me tell you where the creek is. I am basically seven paces from the edge of the downhill slope to the creek. So you can see, I bunted this driver down here, but because, because it rolls enough down here, doesn't float up in the air and stop, I can get it down here enough. And now let's take a look. One forty. So a forty yard difference, exactly the exactly the separation between my three wood and my driver. But I got 140 yards now. I don't know what to say about strategy here because if I do hit that too far, then I'm completely screwed. So I've got to sit there and make a decision. Do I want a 170, 180 yard shot in? Do I want to bun a driver down here? Again, it's it's totally about it's totally about risk reward. And to me, I'd rather take the chance of hitting it down here far enough and having a short iron because it gives me a better chance. Okay, 140. I'm gonna hit this nine iron. Uh, this is a pretty simple, straightforward shot here. Um, I'm gonna aim, wind's coming a little from the left. So I'm gonna aim a little to the left side, kind of picking a spot out there. Okay, that little, little leaf right there is pretty helping me a little bit. I think I gotta take a little off this too. It feels like it's gonna go fast, so. I went a little short. All right, it's not too bad being short here. I hit that pretty good though. I'm not quite sure why it ended up short like that. Maybe the wind knocked it down. Sometimes what happens is the wind is coming pretty high. You can't feel it, but it's, a, it's high here. And the ball goes up and just kind of pushes it down so it didn't quite get there, but let's go get that up and down. Kind of this is the little valley here it tends to end up in. Um, one of the hardest things about this course right now, this grass is actually very dormant. It's not growing, so it's very matted down. Th th these are the hardest shots on the course right now, is these chip shots, because as you know, the ball's kind of matted. It's sitting down, you gotta clip it, and then you got this <laughs> elevation, and then you got a hard green to stop it on. To me, these are harder than hitting a, a driver, or hard, even har harder than hitting a shot into these greens is these little chip shots. Um, but anyway, so let me walk you through this a little bit. So you, you gotta make sure you have some shaft lead because a lot of people are trying to flip the ball in there. You gotta, and you gotta clip it. You gotta clip the ball. And then you want the hands to kind of lead because you want the ball rolling up the face. You don't want to flip it and not have it roll up the face. That's why these shots can be a bit challenging. So I'm gonna try to, try to clip it nicely. I always pick a spot somewhere in here, you can hear it. It's gonna be really hard. Hopefully it'll stop, have, have a chance to stop. You gotta be a little aggressive on these. Not always super easy, but I'm always trying to be pretty aggressive and clip it. Look at that, how hard that hit. All right. Believe it or not, I'm satisfied with that because I, I landed a little short, but it's such a hard little crisp shot you gotta hit to get it in there. All right. Here's the thing I wanna talk to you quickly about with this Biomech putter though, because a lot of you know that I, I use this putter. Um, one of the things, as you know, when I was, is I, 
my problem that I was having was I was getting too open, so I'm, I'm a lot less open now with it. One of the things Tim, my brother, was helping with when putting, he was tied, he goes, he goes, you gotta be careful not to get the shoulders too open because it, it, it's detracting from the, the ability to go down the line. So I've been squaring up more with the putter, which has helped me dramatically. I'm not fully square, I'm a little bit open, but I like being a more square. It's helping my arms get down the line. So just so you guys know, if you wanna go back and watch some of the biomech stuff that I teach with. All right, here we go. So this wing, it looks like it actually goes kind of straight now that I'm sitting over it. Okay. Okay. So again, making sure I don't get too open on it, but it's more of a just a rocking the shoulders and it's arm lock, so it's really about shoulder line. That's the thing about an arm lock putter is that is that the direction of your shoulders affects how the putter moves. So you gotta make sure the shoulders are in a good spot so that you can just move the shoulders and then it gets it going down the line. Anyway, okay, so on the next tee. I'm gonna tell you the fifth reason for why people get the single point swing wrong. Okay, let's just measure this one. This hole, as you know, because I've played this before on my channel, 141, postage stamp. And uh, pretty famous golf hole, pretty nice. Here's, here's what's always interesting, and I always say this, you guys are probably sick of me saying this, but usually the, the club I hit into that hole is the club I hit into this hole. This is the way it works. So I got a little nine iron here. Um, Let's talk about the fifth thing that people get wrong with a single point swing, which is, it's gonna sound kind of weird, is people worry about ball flight too much. When you're working on new mechanics and a new swing, people are always looking at ball flight. I don't look at ball flight when I'm working on something in my swing. I look at positions and mechanics. Because here's what I know. If you get the model correctly, if you get the positions correctly, you will get ideal ball flight. It's a guarantee. I know that's a guarantee. If I get my address correct, backswing position correct, impact correct, on plane and finish, and my club face is good, I'm gonna get great results. So you gotta stop worrying about results at first. Everybody's like, I'm hitting hooks. Well, you're doing something wrong. I'm hitting slices. Again, you're doing something wrong. But the only way you fix it is to match the model and mechanics. So don't worry about ball flight. Start getting, work, work, work on the mechanics, match the model, and you watch what happens. It starts coming around. So people are like, stop trying to get a result and produce a result. Does that make sense? So stop trying to hit it straight. Make good golf swings and the ball will go straight. You'll produce it. All right, so that's the final thing. All right, let's hit the shot here. A little nine iron. Look at this hole real quick. Take a look at it. I mean, everything says, Todd, just hit it to the middle right of the green. <laughs> It says just hit it right of the green. Taking at that flag is, is risky. Uh, just like you saw that shot I hit back there, I kind of hit it and the wind kind of knocked it down. Well, it can happen here too. So I'm going just right of the flag. And I'm gonna, it's downhill, so I'm gonna take a little off of it. So a little dirt there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, just hit a soft nine iron just to the right side. A little rehearsal. Oh, I hit that so good. Watch this. I love that one. Things fast. So let me explain that shot real quick. The wind's a little down left to right. Nice, I just hit the ball solid. Didn't swing hard. I knew all I had to do was get the ball in the air to flight it. Aimed it just right at the flag and look, I got a 15 footer right to left, pretty easy makeable putt. So a little longer than 15 feet, this thing a little shorter. I, I didn't realize how deep the flag was back here. Um, big slope up here, everything goes kind of towards the left. This green tends to be slower. Um, they just redid these greens on this course and this one tends to be the, the one that had the most difficult time coming in and getting healthy. So it tends to be a little slower. And notice, look where this nine iron went. I mean, if this would have been more towards the flag, it, might have caught that creek so this is actually a really good line all right so i'm going to play this out to the right it's going to go pretty good it's going to come down i'm going to play it probably i'm going to play it over here it's got some slope to it doesn't seem that fast but i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to uh be a little cognizant of the speed just because i do believe it is still fast 
just to keep it to the right. Yeah, slow. Really slow coming down there. Okay. Problem is it just got killed right there on that slope. Yeah, this thing just has a little more hair on it, so it just grabs that ball. It's not quite as quick as the other ones. Okay, all right, hey, listen, let's talk about this real quick. Number one, address position. You gotta get it right with a single point swing. You've gotta match the model, right? You gotta quit worrying about results and match the model. You can't mix methods, right? And you gotta make sure that you're not guessing when you're practicing. In the description below on the channel, look at the information on there. We have pocket guides you can buy for the swing. I have a downloadable PDF that talks about our coaching process. You're welcome for that and I have information about the Biomech putter. Make sure you click that if you want to have a great putter that's going to help you simplify your putting as well. Thanks for joining me today. Click the bell icon. Give me a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next video.